Here we have the Dodge 48 RE transmission on the teardown bench. The truck came into the shop with a slipping condition and second gear under higher torque demands. We attempted a front band adjustment but did not alleviate the problem. Transmission needed to be removed from the truck, tore down and evaluated. Here we see the 48 RE from the left side. An interesting note, in 2005 Chrysler added this electronic throttle valve actuator motor to the transmission. This motor is connected to the throttle valve shaft in the valve body that controls throttle pressure. Previously this was done with a cable from the accelerator to the transmission. This motor allows the controller to finely tune throttle pressure according to throttle openings and certain demands. Here we can see the overdrive housing removed from the 48RE. Here we have the pan removed allowing us access to the valve body and solenoids. Here we have the direct drum removed from the transmission. Notice the heat marks on the drum indicated by the arrows. Also notice on the bottom of the drum the dark discoloration around the drum. This is caused by excessive heat. Here we see the intermediate band removed from the transmission. Upon closer look, we can see the band material burned black and scored. This greatly reduces its capacity to hold the direct drum still. This must be done to achieve second gear. This is the direct clutch disassembled. Again, by closer inspection, we can see the direct clutch and the heat marks left on the clutch plates indicating another slipping condition. These clutches must be replaced. Here we have the 48RE transmission completely disassembled ready for cleaning. Here is a view of the valve body disassembled cleaned and ready for assembly. We can take a closer look at some of the other sections of the valve body that will give you a little more detailed view of what's inside. Here we can see the three main sections of the valve body clean and assembled and ready for final valve body assembly. Now we have the valve body fully assembled, have added the filter, ready for installation in the transmission. Here we have the overdrive housing ready for assembly, including the components of the overdrive direct clutch, overdrive clutch, overdrive planetary, overdrive housing, overdrive direct drum and ring gear, output shaft, and overdrive overrun clutch. Here we have the overdrive assembly ready to be installed in the overdrive housing. Here we have the overdrive assembly ready for installation on the transmission. Now we move to the case components. Here we have the front pump ready for assembly and fully assembled. Front clutch. The direct clutch. Here we have the direct drum and the intermediate band 
ready to be installed in the transmission. Notice the machined finish of the direct drum and the color of the material on the intermediate band. This is what they should look like. Now we have all the sub-assemblies of the transmission fully assembled and ready to install into the transmission. Now we begin to assemble the case. Here we have added the front servo, the 1-2 accumulator, and the rear servo. Here is a view of the rear of the case where we've added the overdrive clutch piston housing and we've also added the rear applied lever for the rear band. Looking into the rear of the case, we can see where we've added the drum support, which is part of the overdrive piston housing and the low roller clutch. Here we've installed the rear band and rear drum into the case. Now I've installed the overdrive housing to the back of the case. With the transmission laying on its back, we are ready to begin final assembly. Here I have added the front planet, front ring gear, sun gear, and shell. And now the forward clutch and direct clutch and the front pump are added. With the valve body installed, we are ready to bolt the pan on. Here we've added the linkage and the range sensor. And then we bolt on the throttle valve actuator assembly. These were the soft parts replaced during overhaul. Not shown are the torque converter and direct drum.